Well, how do you two, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, we're going to take a step back in time, if you will, and we're going to uh, work on uh, some older equipment. And I just want to show you what's possible with older equipment, since I have some in here. I want to repurpose it and reuse it. So I've got an old uh, unit in here from a client that had a dead hard drive in it. Uh, you probably remember that from my previous video. And I'm going to show you today what uh, one of the things we can do with it. All right, so this is a Dell Vostro uh, from a client. I think it, we purchased it back in 11 or 12. I honestly can't remember, but physically it's in really good shape. Uh, it has one major problem in it. That is the hard drive in here has failed and it is physically failed. But, you know, it's a nice little unit. It's only got a three or 400 watt power supply. Uh, yeah, 300 watt, but uh, for what we're going to make it do, it should be uh, winner, winner, chicken dinner. So I'm doing this handheld because uh, I'm tired today <laughs> and I'm still fighting that respiratory infection. But I have here a client's uh, PC. It's a Dell Vostro. It's not that old. I think it's back from 2012. And uh, it, it was working. Uh, as you can see, it's not a real powerful unit. It's got a Core 2 Duo inside. It's still a good machine. Um, the problem is, is that when you turn it on, and hopefully I can get it to repeat itself here while I'm recording, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. And if you'll listen. That doesn't sound good, does it? No, that's the sound of a failing hard drive. But it does come up to the boot up screen. And then of course it's going to give us that failure here that our hard drive is no good. And that's no good. And this is the life of an IT guy. <laughs> Now, as we, uh, we we provide managed services to our clients, we're soup to nuts. So, when they have a PC break, we try to fix it. Uh, now, the question is, is this PC, and as you can see, it's not going to boot. There's no boot device available. The question is, is this PC worth repairing and returning to work? Well... That makes for a great vi uh, YouTube video, which is what we're going to do on it today. So what I'm going to do, we're going to pop a, a, a SSD drive in here, just a basic sand disk, nothing fancy SSD drive on this old Core 2 Duo. We're going to install Windows. We're going to do all the updates, and then we're going to we're going to test it and see if it can hold up to running in an office environment, but by, by today's standards. Well. It is a Core 2 Duo, a E7500, 3 gigahertz. It should be capable of running Windows 10, but here's the bigger problem. We only have 2 gig of RAM in here. Now it is DDR3, so it's two 1 gig DIMMs. So I think I may have some RAM laying around to where I can upgrade this. I do not know. However, if there are RAM spots free, I don't think there are. I think they're all populated. Yes, they are. As you can see, both RAM slots are populated. The machine is running. Fans are spinning. It even has a PCI Express slot. It has a couple of them. Uh, one is an 8 or a 16, and the other one is a 1 or a 2X, I believe. And then, of course, it's, it's sold. It has PCI slots as well. So first things first, let's see if I have 4 gig of RAM I can put into this thing. If not, uh, I don't know that we run around Windows 10 on here. So it turns out I did have some of this uh, Kingston DDR3 RAM uh, 1066. I have two 2 gig strips, so I'm going to put that into this uh, Vostro here uh, in place of the 1 gig uh, sticks of RAM and see if we can get 4 gig of RAM out of this thing and then if we can that'll make it worth uh, putting Windows 10 on there uh, if not then we'll have to try something else okay the RAM is in now the moment of proof 
power it on Let's see if we get anything on the display that's a good sign I'm gonna go ahead and enter setup you can hear the hard drive clicking as it fails and then eventually we'll get into the setup here you know it's got to wait for that hard drive to fail so I'm gonna power it off I'm gonna actually disconnect that hard drive completely power and data doesn't need to be on there at all and now we'll uh, put it back up go ahead and hit F2 to go into the setup and hopefully it'll take less time yeah there we go and so now as you can clearly see we have 4 gig of RAM 1066 dual channel mode DDR3 and uh, it's a core 2 duo 3 uh, three mega cache E7500 so let's get an SSD drive installed in here and we're not going to do anything special with that it's going to be a cheap one and then we'll uh, load Windows 10 and see what happens alright so we've got the SSD drive installed just give you a look at that real quick there it is it's installed on the side we're gonna go ahead and power this unit on and we'll get ready to hit F2 to go into the BIOS and we hit F2 and we'll see if it likes this hard drive any better there we go so it sees the RAM pardon me as I arrow over it sees serial ATA0 as a hard disk and it sees it as a SanDisk SSD plus 240 gig so that should be great now what I wanted to do though is I want it to boot let's just uh, check our advanced settings we'll come back for that I want it to boot off the USB and that's what it's going to do um, actually yeah the USB is the first one to boot off of so I've got my Windows 10 key in there we're going to install Windows 10 Pro because this one had Windows 10 Pro on it and it should activate without a key or it will activate with the Windows 7 key that I have up above so that's what it originally came with so wish me luck so as you can see it's prompting us to install an operating system so we're going to select Windows 10 Pro click on next here sorry I'm doing this handheld today and let's see if it determines okay I accept the license terms next we'll do a custom I always do okay it sees the entire space of the drive so I'm just gonna click on next down here and away we go and so there you go Windows 10 is installing success well we'll see alright so uh, I've taken the USB key out and I'm gonna go ahead and power the unit on and we're gonna see if we get a successful boot into Windows now if we do get a boot into Windows I'm gonna go ahead and do what I need to with Windows 10 behind the scenes namely updates get software installed etc and then uh, get it all prepped and set up to run some testing so this is a good sign it looks like it's booting off the SSD and is gonna boot into Windows 10 so I can continue with my setup so as you can see the PC is running got a hard drive activity indicator and uh, Windows 10 is getting ready so uh, let me get some software on here and some updates done and we'll come back alright so the unit is definitely up and running and you know I love to do my network file transfer speed test so I'm copying a rather large uh, file over to the machine and we're getting our 120 or 100 megabytes per second as normal as we always do with Windows and you can see it uses quite a bit of memory and disk just to do a file transfer but it is getting the job done and Windows is up and running so continuing on uh, we're playing a high def video on here streaming it across well not across Netflix but across the network it's uh, I'm just playing a high def video through VLC media player not using MB or anything and 
Here's the impact on CPU, RAM, disk, and Ethernet. So not too bad. Uh, the machine's been up and running a couple hours now, and uh, and uh, it's doing well. Haven't had any hiccups. I've got all the updates done. Uh, I'll be running some benchmarks after I let it play uh, some videos for a while. I'm, I've also streamed a YouTube 1080p video, and uh, I'll show you the CPU results on that. So, what better to burn in a computer than Boink? You know, Boink is my favorite burn-in tool. So, here we go. Here's the specs. According to Core Temp, it's an Intel Core 2 Duo E7500 Wolfdale processor. It's got a, uh, it's based on an LGA 775 socket T. And as you can see, we're well within temperature norms even at 100% CPU load. Now over here on Task Manager it of course says I only have a 90% CPU load and I am running a couple of tasks in Boink uh, to uh, just kind of burn this thing in. Now we're not going to be continue using this system. It's really good for one thing and that would be a workstation running Windows 10 and maybe some office application and some web browsing we did run um, some YouTube videos in high def and it handles them just fine even with the limited built-in uh, graphics I ran a VLC media player and it ran well uh, no stuttering no nothing on high def videos both running locally off the local SSD drive and off the uh, network so no problems there but if you wanted to game on this thing or do some serious video editing um, yeah, I doubt that that's going to work well for you. You never know, though. You might be able to put Adobe Premiere Elements on here and get a little bit of video editing done. Now, it does have a PCI Express slot, so you could, in theory, put a better video card in here and perhaps get a little bit better performance out of it. But it is a rather old machine, um, you know, running a Core 2 Duo. Um, and uh, so yeah you're really limited as to what you can do now the power consumption on this thing is not bad it's about 62 watts running at 100 percent and uh, let me move the camera down here to the PC itself and as you can hear it's it's not struggling at all that's one thing I will say about Dell they, they make some really good they make some really good PCs. Now, I could put this PC back into service running Windows 10. It does have a valid license. Uh, we'll see what the customer wants to do, but this was just kind of a proof of concept video of what you can do with some of these older machines. And these are the machines I typically run into out of client locations that are getting a little old and long in the tooth. But, uh, you know, if it's just a daily workstation for a, a user that does Word and word processing and Excel spreadsheets and does a little web browsing it should work fine. Alright I can't show much of this but uh, I'm gonna yell and scream fair use with YouTube just so I can show you. I'm running MB and you can see uh, I'm in a pretty high action scene running on a 1080p video and uh, it's Guardians of the Galaxy of course and that's all I'm gonna show of it but as you can see uh, I get little stutters every now and then no tearing but keep in mind, this unit really doesn't have a video card. It's built onto the CPU, and it's sharing CP, uh, you know, RAM uh, with uh, the rest of the system. So it's not going to be what I would call the best operation. But it's it's keeping up, you know, remarkably well. If, uh, there's no way in heck this would play a 4K video, as you can see. It's it's keeping up. It's not stuttering. Every once in a while, you'll get a little glitch, but uh, other than that, it's working fine. Alright, so now we're viewing live over the air TV. And uh, actually, we're viewing Gunsmoke, and it's a standard definition program, so there's not a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of call for the CPU to do a lot of things, but uh, we're going to switch over to a high def uh, over the air, or a high def over the internet uh, TV show here next and see how that does. But uh, there's uh, playing regular TV through MB on this machine. 
Okay, so now I'm watching uh, an over-the-internet TV show from Silicon Dust. This is Jack the Giant Slayer. Uh, we won't worry about showing too much of that, but pay attention to the to the Ethernet speed because it is coming down to us across the Internet. So you'll see little bursts coming down the speed, 14 megabit or megabyte, 7 megabyte. And uh, the CPU is handling it just fine. I'm not seeing any stutters or anything in the picture. As you can see, we got a pretty good picture here. I'll just show a minute of it, and then we'll come back here. So uh, even with uh, over the internet TV, it's working remarkably well with MB. And so I'd say that's a win. Well, there you go. That that's you know it just goes to show you what you can do with 10, 11 year old equipment. Most businesses keep computers three to five years. Me, I keep them 10, 11 years, and this machine is living proof. And keep in mind the fact that the CPUs aren't getting any faster. They're just putting more of them on that piece of silicon, giving them uh, lots more RAM and really fast SSD drives. So that just goes to show you that uh, all you have to do really is uh, up the RAM and pop an SSD into a 10-year-old machine, and it's still perfectly capable of running Windows 10. Now, it work, It would work fine in a business environment. You know, you're just doing word processing, uh, spreadsheets, a little bit of uh, web browsing, etc. Hell, this thing will even play high-def video, uh, 1080p, uh, and stream it off of Netflix and YouTube and everywhere else without, without a problem. So, And it only uses about 50 to 60 watts when it's running, so why not, right? It would make... It would make a, instead of throwing this thing into a landfill, repurpose it and give it to a family member or, or whatever. So I think we'll play a little bit around a little bit more with this machine. I'd like to put uh, maybe uh, uh, Peppermint Linux on there and see how it works with a spinning hard drive and a couple other experiments. So uh, perhaps you have that video to look forward to. But anyway, we hope you found the video entertaining and informative. As always, please give us a thumbs up down below. We take PayPal and Patreon if you're so inclined. Thanks again for coming to see us. Don't forget, we'll see you on the other side.